Welcome to From the Mind of Christine McConnell. This is our Christmas episode, and we're gonna be making a Christmas tree topper. These are traditionally, you know, really cute or pretty. It's something like an angel or something along those lines, and I wanna go a little bit more sinister with mine. I'm gonna be making a gingerbread man. I personally really love the gingerbread man that was featured in the movie Krampus that came out a few years ago. So I'm taking some inspiration from that and adding my own little twist to him. So with that said, let's begin. So let's talk about how we're going to build this thing. He's going to have a skin of clay, but if we were to just build him completely out of clay, he would weigh so much that he might you know, pull your Christmas tree down. So you always wanna start with like an armature. Typically something people do is crunch up aluminum foil, and I love that technique but I want him to light up from the inside. So we're going to have to create kind of like a cage that has like a hollow cavity in it. And that's why we're gonna be using wire. I'm using this like flattened aluminum because it can kind of, it's really helpful in creating like a smooth surface. Then I'm using a bunch of pliers. And then for the rest of the body, you can use kind of any gauge wire, just so long as it's not too flimsy because some of them can be. To connect each of these pieces of metal together, I'm folding over their ends and joining them and then using some pliers to squeeze them shut. The initial structure of my little guy here is gonna look like kind of <laughs> just a stick man. But once I start adding these loops of wire, it'll kind of bulk him up a little bit. And this just kind of creates a nice sturdy frame that I can then bend into an action position. Now I'm adding those metal loops that are gonna kind of beef up his silhouette. Oh, and by the way, this is Arthur Buttons. He's our newest little family member. Because I want to be able to pop a light into the back of his head, I'm creating a little hoop. And I'm then going to lock that into the structure. And this way, I have kind of a size guide. And I won't by any chance be tempted to make this hole any smaller once I start working with the clay. Found these really great glass ornaments that I'm going to be using as his eyeballs and so my next step here is to wire those in place. The wire cage that I built was really really helpful at this point in holding the glass bulbs in place. And by the way, something about the way he's looking right now reminds me of the character Johnny Five from Short Circuit. So now that we have a skeleton, it's time to add some skin. I'm using polymer clay. I really like this just because it bakes in the oven. So you can work on a section bake it, let it cool down, and then work on it some more and bake it again so you're not waiting for it to dry or anything like that and you can just kind of keep working at it. The only thing I will tell you is the color that you get at the craft store. It looks like gingerbread, but really it's kind of too dark. So if you want it to be really true to the cookie, you can add you know, just some yellow and orange. It takes a lot of elbow grease to completely mix it all together so that the color's uniform. 
but once you get that right, it's really going to look perfect. So my clay doesn't just pierce through the skeleton cage that I've made. I'm going to give him a sort of a base layer of skin out of this aluminum foil. You can kind of think of this as maybe like the subcutaneous tissue. And from there, I'll be adding kind of a very thin base layer of clay over this and baking that off. That way I'm not pushing through anywhere because obviously the foil is pretty flimsy. And now he's looking like a robot mummy, which I kind of love. I'm now applying that very thin layer of primer clay. Now it's time for him to go into the oven for 15 minutes at 275 degrees. Once he is out of the oven and cooled down, I could start working on that top layer. And I even had a little assistance from Professor Poof. Projects like these can be pretty tedious and often can bore even the most patient of creatures. So while we fiddle, I'll tell you I had a tree delivered from this company called Masood's Tree Farm from Sequoit, New York. They, I just called them and they found the perfect tree, delivered it and completely set it up. I told them it was going in an old Victorian house with really tall ceilings and they did not disappoint. Lighting it was a real adventure, and I made an entire episode of Lighting and Decorating a Tree, which is currently available on Patreon. The link to that is below, and you can also catch up on all of the videos that I've been posting monthly. Some of the most recent ones are I showed how to make candles from scratch up in a new little workshop I created in the attic. Another one I did for Halloween was making one of those old spooky haunted paintings that you'd often see depicted in shows like Scooby-Doo. Now it's time to start adding some features or expressions to his little face, which I absolutely love doing. Making an angry face is one of the most fun, simple things you can do just because Adding just a tiny little bit of clay above the eyelid towards the center instantly transforms a character. Because he's a cookie, I want him to look like there are little bite marks taken out of him here and there. And the way I'm doing that here in the head where I want it to remain hollow is I just took a very thin layer of clay and pressed it down and I'm just sort of smoothing it into that cavity without piercing it. So you'll still be able to put a light in there and that light won't come through this section. So now it's time to start texturizing this clay. 
there's a couple ways you can do this. If you want like a perfectly smooth surface with polymer clay, taking a brush with some alcohol will kind of totally smooth it. But we want this to be cookie textured. So I'm just gonna use like a big old sponge, tear off little pieces and just push them in until it starts looking kind of right. This isn't the only thing I'm gonna be doing. I'm also gonna be taking some sculpting tools and making some cracks and like adding elements that look true to a cookie. So to me, this is the part that's really fun just because you've got the thing right there in front of you and now it's actually starting to look like something. Using a sculpting tool, I'm adding little dots that are hopefully gonna look like little pits that you would normally see in something that you've baked. Another thing I'm going to do to add just a little bit more realism is I'm adding a seam along his edges, sort of to imply that he was baked in some sort of an antique mold. Because I don't want to damage any of these, you know, really important sections that I've spent so much time texturizing, I will be baking it off for another like 15 minutes, allowing it to cool and then turning it over and working on other areas. However, before I do that, I'm going to clean the glass off the globes with a little bit of alcohol, and then I'm gonna put a light behind him just so that I can make sure that those eyes are looking symmetrical before it's too late and it's already baked. So now let's talk about paints. This is a step that, you know, you don't necessarily have to do, but my gosh, does it make a massive difference in the finished product. So what I'm gonna do is brown the edges of my cookie, like as if he had actually been baked, which is just really gonna add a lot of like three-dimensional depth and realism to him. And then I'm not stopping there. Throughout the rest of the project, I'm going to be mixing little colors together and adding little shadows and highlights and things like that because these are really the things that make a, a creation really pop. So I would start thinking, you, if you kind of start with the polymer clay and think of that color as just kind of a, a jumping off point and not like the finish line, that's kind of a better way to think about it because you know paints are really what's gonna bring it home. Now that the gingerbread is colorized the way I want it, I can fill in those little bite mark areas. And what I want to achieve here is to give kind of the appearance that there are bones underneath this cookie crust and that those bones are made of peppermint candy. So let's take another second to stop. I hate these red lips. So 
<laughs> when that happens, because it happens a lot when I do these projects, something I do is I take a nap or I go to sleep. And when I wake up, sometimes I have the answer or I have like a better perspective. So that's what I did here when I went to sleep and when I woke up at like 3 a.m. in the morning, I didn't want to like, you know, get my captive out of his cage. So I just kind of came in here and started working on him. But I do that kind of often where going to sleep like adds a clarity that I need. Now I'm creating a candy cane dagger for my little gingerbread man to be brandishing very menacingly. If anyone here has seen the 2015 movie Krampus, you will instantly recognize this. I'm now going to airbrush the eyes and I want to make sure none of that paint gets on the rest of this cookie so I'm using a little bit of painter's tape to block out anything I don't want getting painted. I'm using a little bit of a thinning medium with some acrylic paint to get ready to start painting on my peppermint bones. Once that was done, I went over my entire creature and just added any little highlights or shadows that I feel like it needed, as well as mending any mistakes that happened along the way. To make his gumdrop buttons, I just cut off a little piece of glue stick, melted it down to a dome using just some parchment over the stove, and then I lightly painted a little bit of red over that and then sprinkled some sanding sugar as well as a little bit of white glitter. To make sure that I would be able to affix this in a variety of ways to the top of the tree, I'm doubling over a little bit of wire and I've pierced several holes throughout the back of him that I'm going to loop this through, twist it around, and that way it can just be sort of twisted and affixed in several different places. Thank you. 
right? He is all finished and I love how he came out. He's got kind of so much personality, but I will tell you that when you turn off all of the lights in the room and you can just sort of see him up there, he goes from being cute scary to just being scary. <laughs> Anyhow, I post a new episode every single month to Patreon and when I have extra time, I post here on YouTube. So if you want to catch up on everything that I've been getting into, follow the link below to see all of that. Next year, I'm going to be tackling some of the sort of more heavy duty elements of restoring this house. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, have a very happy holiday.